That's my cue. Thanks for joining me again. Now, how green is your wardrobe? And I mean the clothes in it, not the actual thing, you understand. There's been a lot of talk about how 2020 is the decade of this and that. And now I've seen a piece in the Guardian Newspapers UK edition predicting that green will be the colour of the decade. And that would be wonderful because green can be a calm, healing colour. Emerald green, after all, is the colour of the heart chakra, the energy vortex spinning in our chest area. Forget red, green is the colour of love. It was a Dutch trend forecaster, Lee Edelcourt, and I hope I pronounced that right, who predicted that green would be a key colour for the rest of the decade. She's linked its popularity to a hunger for nature, which is also manifesting in a renewed trend for houseplants and the rise in the practice of forest bathing. You know, that's the practice of getting out into nature and connecting with the plants and trees, something that I'm all in favour of. So it fits that in these times of increasing interest in green values, in health and well-being, a time when the Earth's vibration is higher than ever, the very visible fashion industry should veer towards green as the colour of choice. According to the article, the big names in fashion design have done with florals and are turning to leaves and plants as their inspiration in their spring and summer 2020 collections. Some, like Marc Jacobs, Balenciaga and Valentino, had little green dresses on show. Not your little black dresses. Green would appear to be the new black. It's been coming for a while, though. Pantone named Greenery its colour of the year in 2017. The writer and actor Phoebe Waller-Bridge made the best-dressed lists in a forest green suit. And the same bright green was used for the cover of Margaret Atwood's long-awaited and much-vaunted The Testaments, a sequel to her celebrated The Handmaid's Tale. Now, Margaret Atwood says that she chose green for the cover for its hopeful connotations after the bleak dystopia of The Handmaid's Tale. Green is the colour of renewal. But green can be problematic. Certainly in the fashion industry, Coco Chanel, the inventor of the little black dress, hated green, apparently. Vogue called the little black dress a sort of uniform for women of taste. Black's a neutral colour that can go anywhere. Not so green, which is much harder for some people to wear. And then green dyes were made using arsenic in the 19th century, if you can believe that. So that killer look, literally. And the fashion world isn't well known for its clean green credentials even today. It may take inspiration from nature, but the business can have a negative effect on the environment. Take cotton cloth production, for example. It's a major polluter. Did you know that cotton is mostly grown in a monoculture and is hugely reliant on pesticides? It may only be grown on under 3% of the world's agricultural land, but apparently it's responsible for consuming 6% of all the insecticides and nearly 7% of all the herbicides used worldwide. Intensive cotton cultivation seriously degrades soil and it contributes significantly to climate change, according to the experts, and that's all before the bleaching and the dying stage. Then there are the social repercussions of the manufacture process, which all too often relies on exploitation to some extent, in child labour, low wages, poor safety standards. Green may become the colour of the decade, but will it become the ethos of the period? Will choosing a healing colour contribute in some way towards healing an industry of its dark practices? The latter will in no small part be down to each and every one of us, starting with the trend for cheap throwaway fashion. Just like fast food, fast fashion offers as little beyond instant gratification and can mask a multitude of harmful practices. So we need to think about what we wear. Clothes can make us feel great, but at what cost? Until the fashion industry cottons on to the negative impact it often makes, it's up to us to take our well-being into our own hands, isn't it? You know it makes sense. Until next time.